Can everyone please just, you should have a little hand icon. Um, I've muted you all, so hopefully you won't be able to hear each other. Um, if you have that option, can you also mute yourself? That way we don't get everyone's background noise, which can be quite distracting for everyone and particularly for me. So if you can hear me okay, can you please just raise your hand? You should have a little hand icon, just click on it, please. Yes, I can see a couple of hands going up now. Great. Excellent. Yep. Ah, uh, that's all looking really good. Great. Okay. Well, let's get started. Okay, so Measuring Your Online Success by me, Jane Woodley, um, by GoToMeeting. I hope you'll find this um, informative and interesting today. So just a little housekeeping before we start. As I said, um, I just ask you to all mute yourselves, which is great. Everyone seems to have done that. Um, if you do have a question, I'm happy to take them as we go, and I will do my best to answer them between now and 12 o'clock. Um, so just type your question in the questions panel, and um, you can either show everyone or send it privately just to me. And when you do have a question, please just raise your hand, and I will check from time to time um, in case I've missed one. And I will do my best to answer them verbally, or if I don't get to you, during the session, I will answer it either by typing in the um, in the uh, in the functionality that we have here, go to meeting, or I will send you an email. Okay, because I've got your registration details. So please do feel free to ask questions all the way through, and I will do my best to answer them. And also, I always say to my webinar participants, you might just want to have a pen and paper nearby just to jot some things down. We are recording this session, and it will eventually be live on the TQ website in the Digital Ready um, section, but it might take a little while. So in the meantime, you might just want to jot down some notes as you go if, uh, if you would like to do that. Okay, so let's get started. So why do we measure things? Why do we bother measuring things in digital? Well, when we're working online on the internet or social media or email, anything digital, it's pretty much possible to measure pretty much everything online. And measuring and looking at your digital data can tell you what is and what's not working. So you can find out what's working well and what needs a bit of attention with your website, with your online marketing, with your social media, with your email marketing, any other digital marketing you're, ha you're spending time or money on. And obviously if you know what's working from the results that you're getting through your measurement, then you can do possibly more of the same thing. Um, or related things so that you're spending your time and money wisely so you're spending your precious resources on things that you know or have a good you know have a good idea are going to work and similarly if you know what's not working um, you can stop throwing money at it or spending time on it if it's advertising or if you um, if you can see that your website isn't working for example that can give you some clues to improve your website and make it a better sales tool for you so um, measurement in a nutshell you can get more out of your time and money by using your available data to make sure both are spent wisely and you know we're all a bit strapped for time and resources at the moment I'm sure in these times and so you can measure everything in digital which means you can get a lot of very powerful information that can help you to be more effective in your marketing so to put it simply, we love data. <laughs> Use your digital measurement data to help you spend less time and money getting more customers. And it's worth pointing out at this stage that most of the measurement tools, or at least the ones I'm going to show you today, are free. You can, a lot of them have freemium models where you can have a free trial version or a free version and then upgrade and pay. But most of the stuff I'm going to show you today is free. So, um, and it can make you, uh, really empower you to make really good decisions about your digital marketing online. So, what sorts of things can we measure? Well, pretty much anything. So some of the more common metrics that we're going to look at today are your website traffic, so your visitation levels, what people are doing uh, when they reach your site, throughout your site, where they've come from, um, what sites they've come from, if they've come from a search engine, what keywords they've used to find you, which can help with your search engine optimization and search engine marketing. You can even find out things like demographics, like how old they are and you know where they live and where their location is. So quite useful information from website traffic. If you're doing advertising campaigns, uh, you can, in search engine marketing, SEM or AdWords, if you like to call it that, you can obviously get a campaign report that can show you your results, it can show you what your most successful ads are, what got the most click-throughs, and of course, um, who converted from which ad. If you're measuring, if you're doing an email marketing campaign, you can measure things like how many of your emails are being delivered to people's inboxes. 
and how many are being opened and read and which ones are driving clicks to your website, which particular emails and which particular links in the email are driving traffic through. And so you can improve all of these things as you go by having a go at something. If you've got a bit of a hunch about your market, trying something out, measuring how it went and if it worked, maybe doing more of the same. If it didn't work, maybe trying something else. Um, social media, in particular Facebook Insights, you can measure things like what are your most successful posts. Um, you can get information about your Facebook likers, their age, their country, their preferences and obviously if you know what worked as a post, what got you engagement, then maybe there's some clues in there to do similar things in the future. Know what didn't work, drop it or maybe try something, uh, a different way of doing it. And we can also briefly today we'll have a look at some of the tools for looking at conversations in social media. Who's saying what to whom and does it affect you? What and also we can look at what your copy looks like to Googlebots, Google search engine, so that, so that can help you a little bit with your SEO. And um, yeah, so those are the main things that we're going to be looking at today. You can measure most things basically, but these are just some of the things that you can measure. Just dealing with the technology here, radio. So. Without further ado, let's have a look at what we can measure. Here are the, some of the tools we're going to look at today. Google Analytics, which uh, measures traffic uh, to and around your website. Google AdWords, which gives you reports on campaign reports on your AdWords advertising. Email metrics, this is one here. Um, social media metrics, and we're also going to look at a few more. But on this page, Google Analytics, what can it tell you? So your analytics code, if it's in your website, can show you a lot of things, a lot of useful information, but some of the basic stuff is visits, so how many people are new to your website and how many people came here before and have come back to look at something. Um, it can show you page views, so how many pages on your website have been looked at in a particular amount of time and which are your most popular pages, which are the pages that are not being looked at. Um, it can show you average page views, so it can give you a number of um, page views per visit. So for example, if your page view is 3.2, it means that on average per visit, the visitors looked at 3.2 pages on your website. Um, it can show you the time spent on the site, how much time people are spending, and it can show you unique visitors, so the real number of individuals that visited your site, and it only counts the initial vi um, visit. It can show you where your traffic's coming from, your traffic source, whether it's coming from search engines, from marketing that you've been doing, or whether people have typed you in directly, whether it's coming from social media. It can show you your bounce rate, that is um, people have come to your website and have left on that without doing anything else. So um, that can be quite useful information and uh, it can show you which was the last page on your site basically. Um, which was the page that people left and if that's your contact form page or the form that has your phone number on, uh, that's probably not a bad thing because they might have just closed your website and rung you. Um, if on the other hand it's your amenities and facilities page, that might be a bad thing because people might have looked at it and um, haven't done anything more so it's not what they're looking for. So all of this information can give you quite a lot of useful data about whether your website is working for you as a sales tool and what things you might have to do to fix it up. and um, for different ads, it can show you clicks on if you have say six ads in your SEM campaign, your impressions or divided by impressions can give you your click through rate. So you can see which ads are generating clicks for you and which are not working at all. And of course, um, tied into clicks is conversion. So of your ads that got the most clicks, which ones of them actually ended up in a sale? That can be also quite a useful metric because there's no point in driving lots of clicks if nobody's buying anything. Um, it can show you what it cost you to get each click and you can work to improve that cost per click to bring it down as much as possible. And obviously it can show you your return on investment for the money that you spent in your campaign. How did it go? Did it get you clicks? Did those clicks convert? Of the money you spent in your campaign, at the end of the day, how many sales did you get? So a uh, Google AdWords report can give you all that information, which is obviously quite useful. Some of the things that we might measure in an email campaign is your delivery rate how many emails of the ones you sent out actually got to someone's inbox. Click-through rate, um, 
what did people click on and how many of them clicked on a link to do something to back to your site. Conversions, similar to AdWords, did people buy something once they clicked. Open rates of the ones that got through to people's inbox, how many of them opened, because not all of them will get opened, as you know. Not everyone opens every email. And what did it cost you to send it out? So again, that can make you um, very efficient in your expenditure, as can the metrics here. Obviously in social media, we can see things like what people did with our postings. Did they share it? Did they like it? Did they comment on it? Did they retweet it? Um, we can measure things like how many people we've got, so how many likers we've got on Facebook, how many followers on Twitter, how many subscribers to our blog, that sort of thing. Um, did people comment on our Facebook post? Did they comment or did they reply back to us on Twitter? Did they comment on a blog post that we made? And how many uh, links to our website did we get from uh, a Facebook post or a Twitter, um, a tweet from someone or a blog post? So this is all quite useful information to tell you how effective you're being in social media. Some of the other things we're going to look at today. So Google Trends is one of the tools we're going to look at which will help you compare and select search terms for your site. You can see what's trending and maybe take advantage of things like events that are happening in the time, like for example the eclipse or the Olympics or um, a royal wedding or a bunch of other things. Maybe there's an opportunity there for you to tap into that kind of trending that is being searched heavily on Google. You can see things like the locality of, or region of people who are searching on particular keywords and Google Trends can also suggest keywords to you for either buying in a search engine marketing campaign or optimising your website for SEO. Social mention is a very useful tool for measuring social media in real time. It can help you to follow conversations and it can show you what people are saying about your brand, your industry or your product and it can tell you um, even better the sentiment, so if it's positive or negative. So um, that can be quite a useful thing that can tend you uh, that can help you get into damage mode if you find that, for example, the sentiment about your product or keyword is quite negative, there's an opportunity there for you to turn that around. Or if it's very positive, there's an opportunity there for you to really get engaged in social media and join the conversation and help get leads to your website. Um, it can also show you something called key influencers or taste makers, which are the people who have a loud voice on social media. The people have a lot of followers, a lot of people um, talking to them or about them. These are the people that you want on your side. If you can get them um, because obviously if they have 10,000 Facebook likers or 10,000 Twitter followers, they can influence to a great degree what the market says about your um, product or brand and also um, help you to reach a lot of people very easily and very quickly. So we're going to have a closer look at social mention in a minute. Wordle I really like as a bit of a cute tool that can help you analyse your copy for search engine optimization and see how your keywords are appearing in the paragraph. And Google AdWords briefly, the keyword selection tool, helps us to select and compare keywords and also create ad groups. So that's quite a lot of information. I realise it might be a bit daunting, um, but I will do it in, in detail as we go. And as I've said, please do feel free to ask questions as we go. So first of all, analytics, Google Analytics, which is kind of the basics. If you don't have analytics on your website now, I would most definitely have that as my number one priority because um, the website, despite what people think about social media, until we can sell tickets on Facebook, your website is still going to be your main sales tool. And so it's really important to know how successful it is and how uh, where you can improve it and if you need to improve it. So <clears throat> if you do nothing else this, <laughs> this year in your measurement, get analytics on your site if you don't have it already and stay up to date because analytics has changed quite a lot and it's quite a different tool to what it was a year ago. Um, so if you need a refresher, I'll spend a little bit of time refreshing yourself in that as well. So analytics can help you to find out where your visitors are coming from and what they're doing and not doing on your site and social media therefore gives you better ROI on your marketing. The whole point of measuring stuff is to iterate and improve and because you can do that you can very easily update your website much more easily than you can for example a print run. Um, so you can just do little incremental improvements as you go if you don't have the time or budget for a major website refresh. It's still possible to do little incremental improvements as we go um, in order to make sure you're getting the most out of your marketing. Question? Nope, we had a question flag, but there doesn't seem to be a question. Okay. All right, so let's have a closer look at our analytics. So here's
here's just a little snapshot of some of the dashboard of Google Analytics and I'll have a look at this in more detail in a moment. Um, this shows us how many people visited our site, 49,000 odd. This is um, the difference between this and this is this is normally, according to Google, real people. Opinions are divided, but this is the best uh, benchmark you can get of how many actual people actually visited your site. This could be a little bit skewed by one person, e.g., visiting on a laptop and then visiting on a PC. Okay, page views, how many pages were looked at in the site, pages per visit. So of the 45,000 people that came, they looked at about one and a half pages. They spent about a minute on the site. The bounce rate is 71%, which is actually quite high. New visits are 89%. So here's our new versus returning. It would seem to me that this website has a little bit of work to do on getting people to come back to their site because obviously it's a lot of established people coming back. So I would be looking at um, could I do some work here, maybe some interesting blog posts, maybe an email marketing campaign, maybe something to increase this returning visitor and reduce this new visitor? Another question, let's have a look. In which report in Google Analytics can we find what would a reasonable bounce rate be, please? We've got from Cecile. I would say, um, I'm going to get to this in a minute, if that's okay, but around about 50%. More detail and detail and that one in a sec. And in terms of finding at our keywords, that was the other question. Yes, I'm going to get to that um, in our um, sorry. I'm going to get to that also in the next couple of slides. So if I don't answer that question adequately, by all means feel free to stay on the line at the end. Um, but hopefully that will answer your question. Bounce rate, what is bounce rate on a website? So, okay. So in terms of getting your Google Analytics um, code in your site, if you don't have this already, you just seem need to go to analytics.google.com and then you log in with your existing Gmail account or Google account or you can set up an account if you don't have one. Then uh, just follow Google's prompts to get the tracking code, Google will send you a piece of tracking code and you just need to copy and paste the tracking code into pages on your website. So if you don't have analytics already, simply go to googleanalytics.com, log in with your Gmail account or set up a Google account if you don't have one and then log in, follow the prompts and select the tracking code then paste it into pages on your website. So It starts as script type, text equal JavaScript, and it's just this whole thing here from script type down to um, backslash script. So you would just simply need to copy and paste that normally into your header on your site, and um, that will mean that you can then track all of the um, traffic to your site and what it's doing when it gets there. If you're not confident with doing this, the person that builds your website will definitely know how to do it, so have a word to them. But it's very easy to do, it's not as hard as it looks. You simply register, get the code, paste it on your website, and then you can start tracking straight away. So someone asked me about bounce rates, so to 50% if you can, or lower. Um, don't panic if it's 51%, but what we're trying to do, bounce rate is people come to your site, they do nothing else and they leave. So they come to your site, they don't look at any other pages, they don't um, click through to any other pages, they don't go through to your booking tool, they don't do anything at all, they look at one page and leave. So if your bounce rate is 71%, what that says to me is you're driving the wrong sort of traffic. The people are coming to your site with an expectation of something that they're clearly not finding on your site. So have a look at how you're driving traffic. If it's through ads, do you need to reword your ads? If it's through um, SEO, are you targeting the wrong audience? Um, do you need to have, another, are people looking for something else? And if you, if you kind of look at that with your search terms, you might find that people are looking for something quite different to what you're offering. So if your bounce rate is 70 or 80 percent, I would have a really good look at um, I would drill down uh, not only with your site, but I'd also drill down and see the bounce rate of individual pages, and that can tell you which pages are successful and which are not. And I would try to figure out why people are leaving without doing anything else. Is it because they can't find what they're looking for? They can't see your call to action? Is it not visible enough? Is it down the bottom of the screen, below the fold? Can they not see what they're looking for on the page? And try to put yourself in the user's shoes and figure out why are they leaving? Are they coming with a different expectation or can they not find it on the page? 
page. So that's the first thing I'd be looking at. Um, new, I've, new versus returning, I've already talked about. So I'd be looking to get more returning visitors and fewer new visit oil. Well, and just to bring that new visitor down a bit. Other things it can tell us, um, the language. So of this particular website that we're looking for, most of the language is in US English, followed by Great Britain English and English in general, followed by French. Now if this French was higher, maybe there's an opportunity there to either have a French language if it's up the top and most of your visits are um, speaking French, um, is there an opportunity there to at least have a page in French or do you need to do an AdWords campaign just in France and just um, lock down the locality just to that country. So we can tell you um, some quite useful information, perhaps if this is Chinese, there's an opportunity there for you to think, oh maybe I'm reaching people in China I didn't know about, do I need to accommodate that in some way? So these Google Analytics metrics, which are free um, and not too difficult to interpret once you've had a, a look at them. Um, can give you some quite useful information on how effective is your site, how effective is each individual page, do I need to do more work to get people to come back, e.g. do I need to have regular specials, do I need to have a blog that people like to read, can I do some email marketing to get people to come back, that sort of thing, and do I need to um, have a different language page or do an advertising campaign in a particular country if this is what people are telling me. The other thing it can tell you, there's masses of information on Google Analytics and I'm just skating over quite a lot of it just to give you the basics. Um, but the other thing it can tell you is um, what system people are coming, people are using to visit your site with. So um, which browsers do you need to optimise for? Is it just Internet Explorer or is it Safari or is it Firefox, is it Chrome? And um, do you need to make sure that your site works for just PCs or Macs or um, Windows or Linux or any of those kind of things? This um, you could also discuss with your webmaster, the person that operates your website, but this can give you quite useful information in terms of choices of functionality and, um, and how your website renders on different browsers. So just looking at the world map for Google Analytics, um, for this website you can see that most of their traffic is coming from the United States. However, they got 316 visits from China and if this starts to get a bit higher, perhaps that again they could think about maybe having a Chinese language page or language site. And once you know which country they're coming from, you can also drill down and it can give you which cities, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego. So again you can see whereabouts you are reaching people, so is there an opportunity for maybe an offline print campaign or a um, narrowed down advertising campaign just in one of these cities and you can even go further and drill down a little bit further to find out which um, cities and countries you're coming from. So here's an Australian example um, of this one, the city that's getting most of the visits here is Brisbane. Sydney, Melbourne, Gold Coast, Perth, Richmond Hill for some reason. Um, but it, I can also drill down there and see which region of the city. So it, you can see there's quite useful information. If you find that it's all coming from Cairns or Port Douglas or Brisbane or Melbourne, then uh, there's an opportunity there for you to target people in that city um, and quite useful information again. The other thing analytics can show you is traffic source. Where is your website traffic coming from? So um, with this particular website we're looking at, about 57% is coming from search, or 58%, 25% from referrals, 15% direct. So search is paid or, or organic search. So Google organic, um, Yahoo organic, Bing organic, that would be making up most of this, but it would also be paid search if they had a paid search or SEM campaign in market here. Um, referral traffic um, is websites that you're, are referring traffic to you. So um, before it's news.com is a referring site for this site. Um, Google.com, Facebook.com, so we are getting some referrals through to this site from Facebook. Um, Redos creations.com, makeuseof.com and a mobile Facebook site. So um, two things that's telling us, there's an opportunity here to um, establish a linking partnership with this site or maybe establish some kind of cooperative online partnership with them and also we are getting referrals from our social media. So either the social media that we're doing is working or somebody is talking about us on social media which is not a bad thing because we're getting clicks through from Facebook.
Um, direct traffic is people directly typing in your URL. And so um, if that is very high, it shows that people obviously um, can know and recognise and can type easily your URL. So depending on what your objectives are in your particular marketing campaign, are you looking for more referral traffic from sites and from social media? In which case I would be working hard to make this higher. Um, have you just set up your site for SEO and you're really happy with it, you're hoping to get more traffic from search, then I'd be looking to make this higher. Um, if you're wanting to get people to type in your uh, URL directly and remember it as part of your brand, then I'd be looking to make this a lot higher, at least 30%. Um, so yeah, it can tell you quite a lot of information about how people are finding you and give you some clues as to what you could capitalise on and what you need to improve. Um, the other thing it can show you is the keywords that people are typing in to find you. So we've had to blank these ones out for in interest of confidentiality, but how to something, free something, how to blah, FBI. So this will give you the keywords that people are finding to um, are typing into Google to find your website. I find with my own website, if I look at my analytics, it's a lot about my name and my company name, which is Jane Wright's Digital. Um, and I find that that is the main source of referral from me in terms of keywords and uh, so that tells me that people know me as a trainer and they can remember my brand name. Maybe I also need to do a little bit of work on Digital Training Brisbane, that's my New Year's resolution is to optimise my site a bit more for other keywords but anyway. So there's quite a lot of information here about how people are finding your site and um, depending on what your analytics are showing up, it can give you some clues as to what you might need to work harder on um, in terms of improving. One of the things that uh, is starting to grow very rapidly is people viewing sites on mobile devices and analytics again can show you if people are looking at your site on a mobile device including a tablet. Um, with this site they're not really, only 10% are and not, about 90% are not yet which surprises me, um, this is probably a pretty old site. Um, so, but if that starts to grow, if that green bit starts to grow and the yes starts to go up from 10% to say 20 or 30% then it might be time to start thinking about how does my site perform on a smartphone? When people look at it on a smartphone, does it break? Does it work okay? Do I need to actually have a separate mobile site? Do I need to build an app? Um, all those kind of considerations because mobile growth is very rapid and continues to grow and if your metrics are showing you that this um, visitation here on mobile devices is growing and growing rapidly and obviously we can do a, um, a trending analysis over time, say over the last three months and see if it's going up, then you might need to start to think about your mobile site or how your site, your current site renders on a mobile. It can also show you which devices, which mobile devices people are accessing your site on. So here the top one is an Apple iPhone followed by an Apple iPad. Then we have Sony Ericsson, then we have another iOS, an Apple device. Then we have HTC, Samsung, RIM, Blackberry, Samsung, HTC. So you can see that for this company, the majority of their, a lot of their traffic that's being viewed in a mobile environment is for the iOS, the Apple operating system. So that might have some implications, for example, if you have flash on your site, on your mobile site, or your site is being viewed on a mobile device and there's a lot of flash on it. Flash doesn't work on these and so all they will see is a black screen. So there's a decision for you to make about um, technology and functionality. You might need to redo any movies you have that are in flash or if your whole site is in flash, you might need to rebuild it in HTML. Um, similarly, if you are thinking about um, doing an app, do you build it for the iOS platform or the Android platform which is what the Samsung, smart, Samsung smartphones and many other smartphones um, work on. So if this for example was very high at the top, Samsung, not Apple, then I'd be thinking if I was going to build an app, okay I might need to build it in Android and later on I might build it in iOS but at the moment Android is the main platform I need to focus on. So you can see mobile device, um, there's some questions to be answered here with optimising your site, whether or not you use Flash and also if you're thinking of building an app, um, what operating system you might want to focus on at least initially. So in summary from Google Analytics, we can find out who's coming, where are they from, what else do we know about them, what are they looking at and is it compelling, any problems or roadblocks with your site, changes you might need to consider, what do you need to change. So if, for example people are spending a long time on your site and I haven't shown path analysis today but path analysis can show you if they're going kind of home 
accommodation bookings or home accommodation, home accommodation, home accommodation, home facilities, home, you know, if they can't, that can show you if they're going round and round and round your site and not doing anything and then leaving that you might need to look at your navigation because it might be confusing people and they can't find what they want. So Google Analytics in a nutshell can tell you who's coming to your site, where are they from, what else do we know about them, what are they looking at and is it compelling enough for them to click through to book, any problems or roadblocks with your site, changes you might need to consider including mobile. So that's a very, very, very quick overview of Google Analytics. Um, I'll leave analytics there and I will come back to questions at the end because we do have quite a few. But um, also if you do have specific questions on your analytics, please do feel free to get in touch with us at um, Digital Ready. I will give you the number and the email address at the end of the slide pack and you can email us at any time. We're more than happy to answer specific questions on your business as well if you have a question we don't answer in today's webinar. So moving on from analytics to Facebook Insights. So Facebook Insights can show you a lot of really useful information um, about people who are your likers on Facebook, who are visiting your Facebook page and doing things with your posts. And if you're not familiar with this, this is basically the admin panel. Most of you who have a Facebook page, I'm assuming, will be familiar with this. But this is what it looks like when you log in to be an admin to manage your page. Um, and this Insights in the red square here takes a little time to update each time you log in because it updates itself in real time. So you're always getting current data, which is very useful. And there are three main metrics here. There are your posts, which are these blobs here, talking about this, and reach. Okay, so Sorry, that's a little bit blurred. I hope you can still see it okay. Um, so this is a series of posts that somebody has posted on particular dates. They did two in January, uh, lots in February, one, two, three, four, five, six in February. And um, these would coincide to the date that a Facebook post was made. Um, people talking about this, this is a really important measure because um, it's not just enough on Facebook or any kind of social media to have people to post stuff up there. Facebook is about the conversation. And so talking about this is people doing things with your post, liking your post, making a comment on your post, sharing your photo. You want people to do something with your post and so the higher you're talking about this metric can be can get, the more successful your social media can be. This is weekly total reach. This is Facebook's extension of people talking about this and this is what Facebook claims is the total reach weekly of your Facebook page of people who are both likers and friends of likers and friends of friends. So obviously um, it would be great to have this as high as possible so that as many people as possible are seeing you. But it's um, this metric here, the engagement metric, the talking about this is just as important. Um, what else have we got? Total likes here. So this is the number of unique people who like your page as at the last day of our selected date range. So we might have selected um, today's date, February the 12th, as the last day. So as at February the 12th, 202,449 people um, like our page. Um, friends of fans, the number of unique people who are friends with your fans as of the 12th of February. So this is um, the likely people you could be reaching depending on how they've set their privacy. People talking about this is basically the number of unique people who've created a story about your page during this date range. So as I've said, they've done something with your post. They've liked it, they've commented it, they've shared it, um, they've answered a question, they've responded to an event, they've mentioned your page, they've tagged your page, they've done something with your page. And weekly total reach is basically the number of unique people that Facebook uh, claims have seen um, the content of your page. Um, as you can see, this is quite a successful page, a lot of likers, a lot of friends of fans, quite a reasonable amount of engagement talking about this and quite a big total reach. Don't despair if your Facebook page doesn't look like this. Um, there's many things we can do to improve. Um, so just drilling down a little bit um, into popular posts, basically this bubble, each bubble represents a post of someone's um, Facebook page and the larger the bubble, the more successful, the more talking about this, the more stuff was done with the post. So some of these have not been all that successful but some have and this is the list view of that same report. So Friday tip for Facebook marketers was basically pretty successful. Um, that's that one here I think. Um, what else? Reach. Tip if you want your SEO strategy, so there was an SEO tip here that was also quite successful. Um, 
try to give you lots of tips, not so successful on reach but quite successful on virality, that means being spread quite a lot. And um, the most successful one in terms of talking about this is the SEO tip. So people talking about stuff. Now obviously um, Facebook measures this through bots and bots are not human. So if you're getting a very high talking about this, that's great. But just double check what the comments actually are because obviously you want um, as many positive comments uh, as possible and not complaints or discussions that are off topic or inappropriate. So even if you're getting a high talking about this metric, go and have a look at the post and just look what people are saying and make sure that it's um, the sort of thing that you want, not abusive conversations or complaints or that sort of thing which case you need to deal with that as your community manager. Um, so, but one of the things this can tell you, obviously, is that based on this data, you can identify which po posts are more effective at helping you <coughs> excuse me, market to your audience and reach your objectives. So um, you could, you know, you could ask yourself if this is a, a video, um, is this telling me if these two are videos that fans are responding more to videos than they are to if these are text posts or if these are photos are fans responding more to photos than text or video or if this is a question are more people answering this question in which case what did we do right with this question that a lot of people were able to answer it or interested in answering it. So when you have a look at your Facebook insights, see which ones are popular, go back and look at the posts, look at the comments, look what people are doing with it and try and understand what made this one more popular than others, was it the subject matter? Matter? Was it the medium? Was it the type of question that we asked? Um, was it just simply an ad hoc thing that happened on the day? Was it something in the media at the time? Or was it something negative that we need to look at, in which case it wasn't that popular, it just had a lot of people talking about it. Um, so when you have a look at your Facebook insights, try and figure out which are the most popular posts and then try and gain some insights for that to help you post um, more popular posts next time you're updating your Facebook page. Um, more Facebook Insights, so this is the Fans tab and this can help you understand who your fans are and how you acquired them. So you can see for this particular website, um, on this date range, let's say it's up to the 12th of February again, um, we have more men, more young men than we do more young women. Um, not so hot in the over 55, so this is obviously a site for young men. Um, and some young women, um, some younger children as well, and some 35 to 44. It can also tell us what cities they're for, um, where that you know where your cities live. So again, that can give you some really good insights into do you need to have a specific feature on that particular city? If there's a lot of people from Jakarta, do you need to use another medium such as Google AdWords to advertise there or your print medium? Should you be targeting users over there? Um, again, quite a lot of useful information. Um, and also languages, you can see in this particular website, Spanish is quite high, which doesn't surprise me because it's an American site. So again, do you need to be posting in another language or are you just going to rely on Facebook translation to do that for you? Um, those kinds of considerations. Do you need to target things specifically at a Spanish-speaking market in this case? In your case, if it's, for example, Chinese um, or Indonesian, again, do you need to take that in into consideration in your marketing? Um, yeah, so you can see there's quite a lot of demographic information here, countries they came from, cities they're in, languages they speak. Again, some useful information um, to help you post content that's relevant and of interest to them. So basically, the talk, just a little summary of Facebook metrics. So talking about this metrics means you have higher engagement, which means reach. And obviously, the more engaged your posts are, the more likely they are to stay up the top of people's news feeds. If no one does anything with your posts, it'll probably sink without trace. So you want people to like, comment or share. And the metrics can tell you which are the most um, successful posts in achieving that. And so if you do have popular posts, have a look at creating more of the same. But as I said, check the comments too to make sure they're not negative. Um, in which case don't create more of the same. Um, and the fans tab that we've just seen will show you a profile of your visitors and that can help you with content and advertising decisions um, further down the track. Again, you won't get it perfectly um, and I wouldn't you know, leap in with my entire marketing budget based on what my Google Analytics tells me. But what you can do is experiment with a little bit of your budget, um, maybe just with you know, 5 or 10% or whatever you think is appropriate. Just suck it and see. Experiment and of course with digital again, you can measure everything so you can see how it went. And if it didn't work, then experiment with a little bit more. And you can get incrementally more effective as you go by experimenting, trying something new, 
proving a hypothesis if you like and then seeing how it went and then either doing more of the same, improving on what you did or trying something else. So um, it can be a really useful way of rather than spending your whole marketing budget and crossing your fingers, giving you some insights as to what's more likely to work and then experimenting with a little bit of it um, to see if that's going to be successful or not. So that's Facebook, social media. Let's have a quick look at email marketing and the sorts of metrics that we can get from an email campaign if we're running one. The basics are delivery. So of the emails that I sent out, how many actually made it into someone's inbox and didn't get blocked at the firewall or go into someone's junk or spam folder, that sort of thing. So delivery. Open rates of the ones that got to people's inbox, how many were opened because not all of them are opened. Click-through rates of the people that actually opened my email, how many read it and actually clicked through on something, clicked through to my website or to a special offer I had or something. Um, repeat open. So if somebody's come back and repeatedly opened your email a couple of times, that can indicate very high interest. We had a situation once where we targeted um, major buyers of department stores and we had one who opened but didn't do anything. She opened the email 29 times. <laughs> Everyone else opened it like once, twice, and 29 was her. And the email tool we were using allowed us to track who it was. And so I passed it to the sales manager who gave her a call and the woman said, yes, I'm really interested. I love your product. I just haven't had time to phone you or to do anything about it. So we placed a really big order. So happy sales manager, happy buyer, um, a really useful insight for us um, in terms of repeat opening showing interest. And again, forwards, like if people have forwarded your email to a friend, that can also be an indicator of interest as well. It can also show you what the best time to send your email is or the best day. You can experiment a little bit. It's Tuesday at 8 o'clock in the evening, for example, when everyone's had dinner and they're looking for a holiday, is that a good time? Or is a Friday night a good time? I'd suspect not because people are tired and out, you know, having fun at the end of the week. Is a Sunday morning a better time? And you can just send it at different times and see what kind of open rates you get and what kind of click-through rates and, and you can start to narrow down when is the best time for us to send out emails. Is it Thursday at 11 o'clock if it's a business email when everyone's got through their meeting and um, is sitting at their desk ready to go? Is that a good time? So you can experiment a little bit and find out when is the best time and what is the best day to send your emails to give you the best chance of people opening it and responding to it. And email bounces. So you can see um, how clean your list is. It's very important to have a list that is not full of um, deleted email or dead email addresses um, because that can affect your delivery. Um, so it can show you how many bounces you got and if you maybe need to clean up your database. And unsubscribes. Um, if you get a very high percentage of unsubscribes on a particular email, go back to it and try and figure out why. Um, you know, if 30% of people unsubscribe, was that just not an offer they were interested in? Or, you know, try and figure out why if your unsubscribe suddenly jumps. So here's an example of an email report um, of this particular one. We sent it to six, nearly 6,500 people. And, um, of, sorry, we sent it, our whole list, and 6,500 people it got there. Um, of the 6,500 people who got it, 2008 opened it, which is not bad um, for an industry email. 4,000 didn't open it yet. Um, the people that clicked through, 305, so maybe we need more links or we need more enticing links of this 2008, 305 people clicked. We got 47 people unsubscribing, four complaints, whoops, <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's kind of it. So obviously this can show you, can we get this higher? Can we get more people to open it by e.g. having more enticing subject line in the email or a, a better offer? or um, can we try a different offer and see if that gets a higher open rate? Is it the time of day or the day that we're sending it? How can we raise this, get more people to open? Of the people that opened, um, how can we raise this? Can we get more people clicking through by having more clicks, by having more enticing wording, by redesigning our email template, getting more people to click through? So again, there's some very powerful information here. Um, we can improve, how can we improve our open rate and improve our click-through rate and obviously from there um, improve our conversions as well, improve our sales, which is what we're all after at the end of the day. Okay. 
So that's very quickly email reporting. Again, if you have any specific questions on your email campaign, more than happy to answer them over the phone or by email to the digital coach line um, at any time. This is just a slide very quickly on YouTube insights. So if you go to a YouTube video, and some YouTubers block this, but most of them don't, then you just click on this little graphy type button here, which will give you insights on that particular video. So I've clicked on this particular one, and that has given me the views since the video was posted and the dates that it was posted. And this tells me that um, the first view was from an advertisement and someone has referred through to this here from Facebook and since then the views have grown and I've got 43,271 views. Um, I've got 48,000 comments, which is pretty good, assuming that most of them are positive. <laughs> um, a lot of people have liked this video. Some people have disliked it, but a lot more have liked it. Um, you can please some of the people some of the time. Um, and the places people have viewed it from are, whoops, sorry, the US, Australia, and the UK. And these are the people that um, it's mostly, so mostly men. Um, from 18 to 44. So again, some basic information here about the success or otherwise of my video. Um, if you have obviously more dislikes than likes, have a look at why, have a look at the comments and see why what people have said and um, why people have enjoyed it. So again, very simple way of getting some insights from a YouTube video. This is uh, AdWords, we'll touch on very quickly, just um, a way of having a look at how successful a particular AdWords campaign was. Um, I've got my campaign, my ads are here, my campaign is here, I've had to block them out for reasons of confidentiality, but if you do AdWords you're probably familiar with this. How many ads were served, how many clicks each ad got, you can see this ad here, the second one got the most clicks. Impressions, my click through rate is highest here. Um, this gives me the average cost per click, so what it cost me in terms of paying for the ads. This was the most expensive ad, but it was also probably um, the most successful. The average position of the ad, so whether it was down the page, one, two, three, four, or across the top. So this is not bad, this is number one. Um, and obviously I haven't set this up for conversions, but the important thing is this is what it cost me to get that click. Sorry, this is what it cost me to get that click. Um, this is how many sales I got from it, depending on what my conversion is. So this is what it cost me to actually make that sale in the end. So again, quite a lot of useful information um, from my AdWords campaign. And one of the most important things to think about when, you, when you're looking at click-through rates versus conversions is of the 100 clicks that I got through on this particular ad, I got 20 people to click through and look at the page, and from that page I got five sales. So what did each sale cost me? And can I get the same number of sales for less by either improving the wording of my ads or improving my landing page or improving my keyword selection or my daily budget? Can I get more sales from 20 views? Can I get more views from 100 clicks by improving any of these variables? So you could experiment with your advertising wording. You could have a look at your landing page and see if it is really set up to convert someone to start to um, make a sale, if it's easy to find the information and it's a, a good converting page. You can look at the keyword selection, how successful are the keywords that you've selected in terms of driving the right traffic and are you spending enough? Could you get the same number of conversions if you improve these other variables for the same money or less? So these are all the sorts of things that you can look at with your SEM campaign. A little bit on quality score. This is a measure that is in your AdWords report as well and it gives you a score out of 10. And what you want to do is get your quality score to 5 or above, around about 7 or 8, 9 is great if you can do it, um, by improving your landing page basically. It basically, quality score depends on three main factors, the relevance of the landing page to the ad, the history of the keyword, how many click-throughs it's got historically, and also your budget, how many you've spent. But if you can look at your landing page and make sure that your landing page has the keywords in it that the ad has, so that the ad matches the landing page as much as possible, you will find that your quality score will improve, should improve. Um, history of the keyword and budget are two other factors, but this is one thing that you can directly influence. So have a look at your landing page and have a look at the ads that are driving traffic to it and think, are the keywords relevant? Is the landing page relevant to the ads that I'm writing? Okay, 
So that is basically a little bit on quality score. Now this stuff you can do all day every day if you have time. You can spend your entire life um, optimising your campaign for SEM. I've just touched on two or three slides. But again, if you're at all interested to pursue it more and if we can help you in any way with it, do feel free to give us a call or send us an email. Okay, so somebody had a question early on about um, selecting keywords for SEO or SEM. So this is the Google AdWords keyword tool and um, you can see here, I've just got a screenshot here but I'll show you the live tool in a minute. Um, I've typed in, I'm looking for words on the theme of whale watching and it has suggested a whole bunch of uh, keywords here for me. So let's just look at that live site. Here we are. So here I've typed in this is the AdWords, if you just go adwords.google.com or the easiest way with Google I find is just to Google things and it will come up. Um, I've logged in with my um, Gmail account and I've typed in the word whale watching here and I haven't set any other parameters because I don't really need to at this stage except for location so I'm only targeting Australia and you can play around with all these filters and see what you get. Um, I haven't included adult ideas because I don't want um, strange adult ideas for a search campaign um, for this one, but if it's appropriate for you, by all means go for it. Um, and I'm only looking for desktop and laptop devices. You could go mobile devices if you wanted to. At the moment, I'm just restricting it to that. And um, yeah, and so what it's done is once I've hit go, it has generated a whole list of search phrases and search terms with the words whale watching or related to whale watch in there. And so what you can do is look at the number of monthly searches and the amount of competition, medium, high or low. And ideally what you would like, it's not always possible to get this, but high numbers of monthly, this is the number of searches on this term in Google and this is the number of uh, businesses already buying this term. And this is approximately what it would cost you to buy that keyword. So you can see that you could select, for example, Whale Watch, which has medium competition and moderately expensive, um, but not as bad as some terms in the finance industry that can be up to $150 a click. So yes, um, here's another one that might be okay. Yep, Albany Whale Watching Low. But if you are in Albany and that is relevant to your business, that could be quite good for you. Um, so. These are just, you know, you can play around with this and select your maybe six or ten keywords from here as the cheapest and the most traffic and the least competition that you can get. But the other thing it does, this is in beta, as well as giving you a list of keywords, is it already by default filters this into ad groups. So if you're setting up an ad campaign, you can have an ad group of Harvey Bay with these keywords, you could have one for Sydney with these keywords, you could have one for Gold Coast. You don't have to do this, but it can save you some time. Perth, Cruise, Coast, so these can be ad groups when you're setting up your campaign if you're familiar with uh, Google AdWords. So you can see you can type in here and you can, can, can get quite a lot of quite powerful information to start you off on your SEM, your keyword buying campaign, or even your SEO, your search engine optimization. It can be a good place to find keywords for either of these things. So that's a Google AdWords tool. All of the keywords are based on actual Google search data, which can be quite useful. Um, Google Trends is another one I just wanted to quickly show you as another measurement tool. We, let's not click through. Let's go and find it. Um, here we are. So you can. this is Google Trends, it used to be called Google Insights for Search and it can give you basically interest over time for particular keywords and also suggest some keywords and some regional interests. So I've typed in here wedding, um, I might just add honeymoon for example, let's just do that. Whoops, do you find you can't type when people are watching? There we go. Okay, so I'm just comparing the search terms wedding and honeymoon and as you can see in this initial search, wedding is much more searched than the word honeymoon. So if you're wondering where to start, that can give you some insights. However, I've turned, I'll turn on news headlines here. Ah, excuse my mouse. There we go. And that can give you... Um, news headlines or articles that were in the news at the time. So this one is the Royal Wedding is underway in Scotland today. This one is the Royal Wedding. This one is uh, UK pubs are stay open late to toast the Royal. So I've just, um, this, you know, obviously this can uh, give you worldwide news headlines, but you can narrow it down. Um, 
the other thing, obviously there's a big spike here, but I presume this is when the royal wedding happens. So this is so um, this is giving you some insight into why people are searching for weddings. So you might want to narrow it down to wedding Sunshine Coast or wedding Whit Sundays or something like that to give you maybe a more accurate estimate of what search terms to use. Um, but other things this can give you, I'm just using this as an example, is again some good suggestions for uh, keywords. Wedding dresses is very high. Wedding dress, wedding anniversary, weddings, wedding invitations, wedding venues, royal wedding. So there's an opportunity there for you to think about some search terms here if they're relevant to what you do. Um, it can also show you um, that most of the searches take place on the East Coast, not many in the Northern Territory, some in South Australia, some in WA. So it can give you, um, it can also give you down as far as the town or city as well. We won't do this in the interest of time, but as you can see, again, there's quite a lot of really useful information here um, on search terms that you might be thinking of optimising for um, that you can select and get some data on what people are actually searching for in Google. So I've just switched to Honeymoon and again quite similar except more volume in New South Wales. Honeymoon destinations is your top search term so everyone can go out and optimise for that now. Um, honeymoon packages, Honeymoon Australia, Best Honeymoon, Fiji Honeymoon. So again some quite interesting um, information for um, you thinking of a search campaign either optimising your website or going out and buying some search terms. Social mention is um, a social media tool that um, can help you track conversations in real time. So I've just gone to social mention and I have there we are. I've typed in whale watching. And you can see here is a list of right now what is being said about whale watching on social media. So there's someone posting a photo on Flickr, there's someone else posting a photo on Flickr, there's someone posting a photo on Photo Bucket, someone's posted a video of a whale hitting a canoe, someone has posted a photo of a fin whale, someone's first posted a photo of a, a video of a humpback whale. Um, more photos, more photos, more photos, as you'd expect for something like whale watching. If it was a different subject, you might get more actual text articles or blog posts. Um, and obviously you can filter this. Um, but the other thing that I really like about social mention is it can give you, again, keyword suggestions, but it can measure sentiment and you can see neutral, so that's all right, negative, positive. So positive, not too bad. If negative is up here and 281 negative posts, then um, that might give you some clues that there's something happening online that you might need to deal with as related to your product or brand. Um, so it can kind of track that and um, help you to get some insights into whether people are responding positively or negatively to your brand or product. Um, the other thing, as I said earlier, very early on in this presentation, key influencers. So this person, you outside events, is the top user at the moment for the terms whale watts. Authors who frequently mention this search phrase. Siri243, Cara Rose47, these are your tastemakers, key influencers, people I would be looking to um, to get on my side or to get talking about me positively uh, if I was in a social media campaign. And we can click through and see who they are. I won't do that um, in the interest of time today, but you can explore that for yourself. Um, if you're not sure about hashtags on Twitter, then you can have a look. These are the top hashtags for the term whale watching. So um, there might be some clues here as to hashtags you could put into your tweets if you're thinking of tweeting about whale watching. And we um, these are the sources of social media mentions at the moment. So Photo Bucket is the biggest one. Maybe you should be on there if you do whale watching with some photos. Identica is another one. Maybe that's another place you could be posting your um, photos of or videos of um, whale watch tours. YouTube, as we would expect, if you don't have videos up there, maybe it would be a good idea to get started. So you can see, again, a lot of really useful information here about um, sentiment, about keywords, about top users, and about top hashtags and also what people are saying and where they're saying it. And last tool to look at of the day just before we finish, I really like this one, it's, it's so cute. It's called Wordle if you're not familiar with it. And what it basically does is it gives you a word cloud, which is what this thing is, for the copy on your page. So you can copy um, uh, the text on your page, uh, if it's you know text that's about you or about your location or whatever, and you can put it into Wordle, and it will give you a really pretty word cloud like this. But the thing it does is the bigger 
the word, the more that word appears on your page. So obviously if you're trying to optimize, this is Air New Zealand, if you're trying to optimize words, words travel insurance, which they clearly are with this content, they have mentioned it a lot on this page and you can see they have been quite successful in this. If um, the biggest word on the page is and or but or the, uh, maybe you might need to have a look at your copy and see how you can rewrite it um, firstly to bring those words out, take them out a little bit, but also to get the word that you're trying to optimize for in Google, the keyword, um, bigger on this page. So easier to show you than to talk about it. So this is Wordle. So this is the actual text on the Air New Zealand page. Air New Zealand offers competitive travel insurance to match your needs, whether you're flying across the Tasman or to other international destinations in our work. You can buy our travel insurance anytime before you take off or conveniently within the flight booking process. So I've just copied that from Air New Zealand. Thank you, Air New Zealand. Um, I've put it into Wordle and I'll hit go. And in a minute, hopefully, around this time, it will give me a word cloud. There we go. We there's a heck of a font, and you can play with the fonts. Obviously, I'll call this one um, Beryllium. And you can play with the layouts and the colours and things to make it more attractive. But it can also show you, at a glance, travel insurance. These are the words we're optimising for. And we've succeeded in that because these are the biggest words on the page. So you can just grab some text from your website if you're trying to um, improve your website for search engines for Google or whatever. Um, whack it into Wordle. And just uh, it can give you a visual representation immediately of how successful your copywriting has been in terms of optimising for Google. So that's Wordle. Okay, so that kind of brings us to the end of our webinar material for today. Um, if you're interested in uh, learning more about anything digital-wise or marketing-wise, we do have additional resources on the TQ website, um, online booking yield management and the Wiz. We have the tourism e-kits that have a lot of really useful information on uh, online marketing for tourism. The big marketing guide is general marketing both on and offline. The TQ Resource Centre and the Better Business Guide. So there's a heap of things on the TQ website, tq.com.au, on um, many things to do with improving your marketing, improving your business, improving your digital marketing. We also, the Digital Ready Program has workshops and mentoring and a coaching service by phone or email. Um, so do feel free to avail yourselves of those. They're free and you can use them as many times as you like up until the end of June this year. I'm Jane. This is Susan and Mirko. I'm the invisible one. <laughs> so I'm Jane. I've been your webinar presenter for today. I hope it's been useful and helpful for you. If you do have specific questions, as I said, here's our phone number and here's our email address. address. Do feel free to get in touch with us at any time. More than happy to help you with specific questions related on anything to do with today's webinar or also any specific questions you have to do with your digital marketing. So thanks everyone. I hope today's been useful. If I haven't got to your question, I will now go and have a look at them and I'm more than happy to answer them by text. Um, if you aren't able to stay, that's absolutely fine. I will send you an email or give you a call um, later on. Thanks everyone for attending and um, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.